I'm, I'm Lance McKee. I live in Worcester. Um, I am in favor of smart meters, but opposed to wireless smart meters. Uh, this is a climate group here. I wonder if they know that Gro Harlem Brundtland, who was a medical doctor, three times president of Norway uh, for something like seven years. She was head of the World Health Organization, and uh, she became um, electro-hypersensitive, that is to say, sensitive to cell phone and Wi-Fi emissions. She went on to chair the uh, Brundtland Commission, which set in motion the, uh, the series of international climate meetings uh, that culminated most recently with the Paris Accords. But she, she had this problem of being sensitive, afflicted by symptoms that were due to radiation. Um, and my, I, I worked for a standards organization that um, I got them into the smart meter standards world. Uh, I learned at, that, at those meetings about the challenges that smart meters presented to, um, uh, to their business models. The way smart meters are implemented can favor or disfavor certain stakeholder groups. Basically, the way they're being implemented favors the industry and not the citizens. Um, I'm particularly concerned about the health effects of wireless radiation. That's all I'll say. Why don't you give uh, your name and affiliation, sir, for the record? Yeah, I'm, I'm Martin Paul. I'm a professor uh, emeritus of Washington State University. I live in Portland, Oregon. I've been giving talks on EMF effects, one just recently in New Haven, and I'll be giving two talks uh, shortly in Spain. Um, so uh, so I, and I've published six papers on how electromagnetic fields impact the cells of our bodies. Um, uh, so what, what I'm going to do, so my, my comments are going to be focused specifically on smart meters. Um, there are many different health effects that have been extensively documented as being caused by EMFs. Uh, most of them have never been looked at with smart meters, but three of them have been, and they've all been uh, reported to be occurring at very substantial levels in response to smart meters. And those are that they're widespread neuropsychiatric effects. Uh, there are cardiac effects on the, the, the electrical control of the heart. Those are life-threatening because the arrhythmias that occur uh, can uh, be, uh, are often associated with sudden cardiac death. Uh, and then finally, there's electromagnetic hypersensitivity, uh, w which is, has just been uh, referred to. Uh, those three have all been uh, reported to occur in response to smart meters. Now, the smart meters were put out, as are all wireless communication devices, without any biological testing whatsoever, safety testing whatsoever. Uh, the the uh, guarantees of safety that the industry has put forth is based on an assumption that only thermal, that is only heating effects can occur. And there's been data uh, from, from thousands of studies uh, going all the way back to 1950s that that's not true, okay, that there are many non-thermal effects, including the three that I just talked about. Uh, so, uh, so I think there should be no question that, uh, that smart meters have biological effects. Uh, now, there's some other issues here that are important. One is that pulse fields, the fields that pulse up and down, are much more biologically active in most cases than non-pulse fields or continuous wave fields. Uh, smart meters are highly pulsed, and therefore they are, they are problematic for that reason as well. Um, and so, uh, and let me just say, everything I say here will be denied by industry. I guarantee it. This is what the science says. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, let's continue to hear from folks. Uh, 
Thank you very much for accommodating us as well. I'm Patricia Burke, and I'm affiliated with Citizens for Safe Technology, which is based out of Canada. And I've submitted written documentation to you. I gave you the uh, report by David Stetzer that was commissioned by the Attorney General in Michigan concerning dairy farmers who were losing the productivity of their cows due to utility ground current that was riddled with high frequency transients. And I also gave you the most recent testimony from Dr. Sam Milham from the Arizona rate case. So what, Dr., uh, what David Stetzer is explaining is when we put these electronic devices on the grid, it just takes a piece of the, six, the clean 60 hertz cycle and it leaves these high frequency transients on the grid. The utility companies realize that these transients cause equipment to fail and they also overload the neutrals because they're going much faster than the 60 hertz cycle. So what the utilities have done is they've allowed, the utility uh, regulators allowed the utilities to use the grounds on the electric poles across the state as part of the distribution network. This is not to code. It took the heat off the neutrals, but we shouldn't be doing that. So when David Stetzer uh, did his report, he shortly afterwards came to Massachusetts, and I gave you these three documents in your packet. The first is from a home in Millis, Massachusetts. It has 20 kilohertz of frequency on the wiring inside the house, and this is what Dr. Um, <laughs> was just talking about, these high frequencies. Kilohertz is a 1,000 times above the 60 hertz cycle. We're not filtering these frequencies before they get on the wiring. This is another house in Millis, and you have this in your packet, that has a much more serious problem with the frequencies. We eventually contacted the electric company, and they had to replace all of the incoming electricity coming into the house. Because we have no meter readers, because of the wireless meters, no one's inspecting the wiring. This last one is particularly problematic because these are readings on the home plumbing. This is a reading between the kitchen sink and the floor, and this home has 480 millivolts. And this happens because we bond the home, elect the home electricity to the plumbing. We shouldn't have frequency on people's home plumbing. So the smart meters make this problem much worse because we're putting a frequency generator at the head end of every home electric supply. We have people in Massachusetts Massachusetts who've gone to the DPU and asked for help, and the DPU consulted a career tobacco scientist by the name of Peter Wahlberg to override all of the health complaints and to justify the safety of smart meters. We think Massachusetts can do better than tobacco science. Thank you. Hi, I'm Phyllis Traver, and I'm from Duxbury, Massachusetts. Um, and I have a company that measures and remediates electromagnetic fields in the home. I've been doing this for about 10 years. And I'd like to address you not as legislators, but as parents and family members and close friends of the most vulnerable in our society. I'm talking about autism. I'm talking about Alzheimer's, pregnant women, newborns chronic diseases, and so on. What happens is they call me eventually. My biggest concern here is that the only standard in the United States that has been la laid out as a guideline for safety is for 30 minutes, this kind of radiation for 30 minutes. There is nothing out there for 24-7. The sun, as you well know, is good for you. You want the sun. You want the benefits of the sun, but would you put yourself out in the sun day in, day out, 24-7? No. And believe it or not, the sun has a lower intensity of radiation than what we're saying we're going to put in these meters. The frequency, of course, is totally different. But the point here is we do not have research and guidelines that say 24-7 is safe. This infrastructure that we're talking about putting into place has to be 24-7. That's why we're doing it. So without knowledge and adequate knowledge of its safety, we're putting all our population at risk. 
I know there's some benefits to this idea of the smart meter, but I can probably guarantee that the health costs would far outweigh the benefits. And the reason I say this is that by the time I'm called into the home, I'm the last person they've called, believe me. They have been through every doctor and every treatment and every diagnosis, and they don't know what to do, and finally they hear that electromagnetic fields might be bad for them, and they call me because I'm one of the few in New England that does this. So I want to tell you that um, I know you can say there are other devices that are out there that are also radiating, but when I leave that home, they don't keep them on 24-7. They turn them off at night. They don't use them all. They replace them with safe technology. Believe me, by the time I leave, there is no 24-7 anymore. This would be the first thing that we would be required to keep on all the time if we want our electricity. So I do ask that you think about this. The difference between 30 minutes and 24-7 is huge. And why tie it to our basic need for electricity? That can get us all into trouble. Thank you. I, I just want to say my, my hope is that, 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 first of all, thank you very much. Uh, I'm hearing you. My hope is that not, not everyone here will, will need to, uh, to testify separately, but I, I don't want to cut anybody off either. I have just like one minute. Can I do that one minute? Okay. I'm a person injured by microwaves. This bill is very simple. It's a matter of basic human rights. The bill allows a person to have an electric meter on their house that does not make them sick. It allows me to have a, not have a penalty for having a meter that is safe for me. Some electric companies refuse to pay to provide a safe meter. A person in a wheelchair is not fined for using an elevator. Blind students do not have to pay a fee to use Braille books. As a U.S. citizen, it is an outrage that I should have to pay a penalty to the utilities to live safely in my own house. Is this not discrimination? I hope the Energy Committee will move this bill forward for a vote because this problem needs to be fixed. It's not going to go away. Websites supporting people with microwave injuries are growing every day. More and more research demonstrates a connection between microwaves and cancer, birth defects, low sperm count, autism, and more. How long will we ignore the warning signs? In a few years, I predict we have a global warming situation with this issue, too. And we'll have high school kids here saying, you poisoned us, <laughs> and you're going to die. <laughs> The fact that there are five bills in the Massachusetts legislature this year regarding microwave safety tells us this problem needs, needs to be addressed now. It took me 10 years to figure out that it was microwaves that, there were, the, that were the source of my illness. And it took me down a slippery slope towards growing dementia. I spent 20 years trying to put my life back together again. So as lovely as it is to be here in the Senate, I'm putting my brain cells at risk in the hope that it will make a difference. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming today. Yes. My name is Jean Lemieux, and I am the president of the Massachusetts Association for the Chemically Injured. You just heard from one of our members, so I won't have to repeat uh, any of that. Uh, you have received full testimony from me with three attachments. And I would like to just reiterate that this is a basic human right. That we have a choice as to the type of meter that we have placed on our homes, our safe environment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are there? Well, I want to thank all of you for coming. Uh, I, it's always a uh, a challenge to schlep here to the state house uh, to make a point and. But this is, this is a series of viewpoints I hadn't heard before, so I appreciate it very much.